Welcome into your favorite high school football show, a week one edition of Football Friday Night, what? Week six. Sorry, I got confused for a minute because it was 90 degrees at kickoff tonight. It certainly did not feel like a week six. It probably felt more like week zero, those summer temperatures like Matt was referring to earlier. Yeah, I mean, well, we got 90 degrees this week. It rained last week. We're going to have to talk to Matt after the show, <laughs> kind of figure out what's going on. But nonetheless, I'm Jacob Seuss. Let's do it. And I'm Jonathan Acosta, not Matt, but we'll talk to him to see if he can whip up some cool Yeah, for where we week. need it. <laughs> Let's go back to last season. Shiloh Christian would finish 4A1 play, a perfect 7-0. But there was one team that gave the Saints a run for their money in conference play. Yeah, and those teams would meet up tonight. Welcome in the Prairie Grove Tigers. Only one 4A loss last season. If you put the pieces together, you figured out that was to Shiloh. And tonight, each team put its 2-0 conference record on the line in our 5 News Game of the Week. So let's head out to Prairie Grove we go. The home of the Tigers. The fans were there, and they were loud for this one. And the defense fed off of it early. Opening drive, Eli Wisdom looking deep. And check out Connor Hubs, the Ooh. Tigers DB, rising for the awesome interception. That ends the Saints drive. Can you but say sweetest play of the week? Well, it's definitely going to be a contender. But Shiloh would march right back down on the next possession. Wisdom reads the defense, keeps it himself, and goes right up the middle for the touchdown. Then it was the Saints defense that turned it up. Ensuing Prairie Grove possession, they hand it off, but it's Noah DeJarnat there to punch the ball out. Fumble! Tristan Mason falls on it, and it's Shiloh ball. So it's Saints ball with good field position, and then Wisdom is going to continue to do it with his legs instead of his arm. Takes a QB sweep outside to the left, and he does a little dancing down the sideline. Nice patience setting up his blockers, and he picks up the first down. That led to this. Ben Baker takes a handoff and outruns the defense to the corner. Touchdown for the Saints. Shiloh doesn't let Prairie Grove put a scare on them this October. It was all Saints tonight as they win 42-14 and improve to 5-1 on the season. Who is going to beat Shiloh this year? I do not know. But tonight in Bentonville, the Tigers playing host to Rogers Heritage. First War Eagles possession. Pass is completed, but JT Comesco knocks it out on the tackle. Bentonville falls on it. They would put up seven on the drive. So we go to the next Tigers drive. It's 7-0 already. Drew Wright hits Chase Nimrod, who's off to the races. Breaks one tackle, and he would finally be dragged down on just the one-yard line. It would be easy for the Tigers, right? Would punch it in himself on the very next play, make it 14-0 Bentonville. The Tigers would go three for three to start the night. Next possession, Wright finds his tight end, Rafe Stalls. He's got the third Bentonville touchdown of the night. Easy cooking tonight for the Tigers. Bentonville's conference win streak continues. They knock off Rogers Heritage 49 to 14. They've got some weapons on that Bentonville offense. And when we return, we head to the home of the undefeated Paris Eagles. Yeah, this team's good. They put their 5-0 record on the line, though, against Baptist Prep. We're going to show you those highlights when Football Friday Night continues. You're watching Football Friday Night! Yeah! Welcome back into Football Friday Night. So now let's talk about one of the best teams we have here in our area, the defending 6A state champion, Greenwood Bulldogs. And they came into this year having only lost two games over the last two seasons. Not bad. Pretty impressive. They equaled that with back-to-back -back losses, though, to end September and fell behind in the conference standings. Yeah, certainly a surprise, I think, to, to all the high school football fans. But last Friday, the Bulldogs, they started October with a win, and they look to make it two straight tonight at home against Siloam Springs. The Panthers looking for their first victory of conference play as well. They were taking on Greenwood, and they got things started early. Panthers quarterback Hunter Talley, one of the best in all the state, he keeps it himself, and he's long gone for the touchdown. But Salem Springs, they trailed in this one 33-17. But quite the run there for Tally. But here come the Bulldogs. Greenwood's Jake Glover has a great run here for the first down. What a game for him. Greenwood still had a 33-17 lead at this point in this game. And then Greenwood's quarterback, Hunter Hudson, he's going to throw it to number 82, Tanner McCusker. Here he goes. There's our man McCusker. He's going to make the oh, catch. And here goes Greenwood. Of course, they're going to score on this one. Glover, he's going to get into the end zone. Greenwood had a 40 to 17 lead. So I'd say, say it's safe to say, Jonathan, the Bulldogs are back on track. They win this one 54 to 17. And going forward, I don't know if you want to run into this team anytime soon. They're probably going to get hot at the right time of the season. All right, let's head out 
and you check out Fayetteville traveling to Fort Smith tonight to take on the South Side Mavericks. And the home crowd would have something to cheer for early. Here we see David Sorg throwing it to Desmond Lopez Fulbright, and he's going to take it himself in for the touchdown. The PAT is good, and look at that. Southside, he's pointing to the stands. They know what's up. It's 7-0 Southside. The Purple Dogs offense has been rolling, though, and they would answer right back. Uriel Espino runs it in for the touchdown. Fayetteville response to make it 7-7. Purple Dogs back on track on offense, looking for another six. It's Crew Garner, 14 unanswered for Fayetteville, 14-7. The Mavs offense was trying to keep up, though. David Sorg again finding his guy, Lopez Fulbright, this time for the Mavericks' first down. Still Mavericks. How about we see a guy other than number six? This time it's Amari Tucker. He runs for a good chunk of change, and it goes for a first down. However, it would be all Fayetteville on the scoreboard tonight. They're up 40-17 to in the fourth quarter. All right, next we're going to head to a team we need to start talking about more, the Paris Eagles, 5-0 on the season, hosting 4-1 Baptist Prep. And Paris quarterback Chase Watts, he's going to roll out here to his left, and he's going to drop the pass right in the bread basket, my favorite carb, for Cooper Haley. Huge gain there. And Watts, well, he's going to get the touchdown on the keeper. But here we're going to give all the credit to McKeel Ellenberg up the middle, taking two Baptist Prep defenders with him. 7-0 Eagles. Here we go, fourth and 11. Paris is going for it. They know they're good. Watts, though, he looks like he's in trouble. Scrambling in the pocket. Massive bodies, but here's going to dump it off to Nate Henderson. He's going to take it all the way to the house. Talking about making something out of nothing. Paris had a 14 to nothing lead. Following a 39-yard field goal, the Eagle defense shines with a comfortable 17 to nothing lead. Bo Bain comes down with the first of two half interceptions. Second interception of the half going to come on the final play in this one. Paris, they're going to get a big win. 6-0 on the year. 24-14 is your final. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that fourth 11 touchdown might be a sweetest play. <laughs> but stay tuned to find out. Over at Wolfpack Stadium, Lincoln playing host to Greenland. And if you like defense, these highlights are for you. Wolves down 7-6, driving. It's fourth down. They throw it to the end zone. Zach Holt is there to batter it away. It stays a one-point game at halftime. The third quarter, we have a wild sequence here. Drew Moore looking to throw it down the middle, and he's picked off by Seth Center, so it's Pirates ball. All right, so very next play for the Pirates. They're on offense here. Max Meredith pitches it to Tucker Metters, and he coughs it on the ground. Lane Sellers, right place, right time for Lincoln. He picks it up for the scoop and score. The Wolves go for the two-point conversion here to go up by seven. And right here, they're going to feed it to their speedster, Rafael Pena. And he's in. It's a 14-7 to Wolves lead. That crowd was going insane. Next Greenland position, possession. Just two plays later, Pirates pitch it and put it on the ground again. Another huge takeaway for the Lincoln defense. And the Wolves were howling tonight. They pick up just their second win of the season, a big 32-14 win over Greenland. Can you say upset alert? And to finish things off, we're going to head to Little Rock, where we find the Northside Grizzlies. We'll see if the Grizzlies could climb the 7A standings when Football Friday Night returns. The 7A Central is arguably the toughest division we have here in Arkansas high school football. And the Northside Grizzlies, well, they're right there near the top. That's right, sitting just one game behind Bryant. Tonight, Northside looked to stay in the race as they took on Little Rock Catholic. So, out to Little Rock will go. Uh, Northside and Catholic. It's a far out, trip to Little a Rock. far trip. War Memorial Stadium, nice stadium. But that didn't stop the Grizzlies from bringing the heat. Ports, uh, Northside hits the board first as senior Walter Katsavis finds the KV on King for the Grizzlies' first touchdown. It's 7-0. Later, same song, same dance, except this time Maury Smith with the catch and run into the end zone. Tack on another 7, 14 to nothing. Northside backed up to their own three-yard line. The distance, it ain't nothing but a thing. As Katsavis finds King once again for a huge, get this, 97-yard touchdown, 21-0 Grizzlies. And they would go on to tack yet another 21 points, 42 to nothing. A blowout win for Northside at War Memorial State. I feel like keep, people keep doubting this, this Grizzlies team. And, you know, they knocked off Greenwood already. Every week they keep putting up a big performance. They're starting to make some noise, and definitely people will take attention to a 42 nothing blowout win in Little Rock. Well, that's going to do it for week six of Football Friday Night. Have a great weekend. We'll full coverage of the Hogs and Ole Miss tomorrow afternoon.